I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I want to say good morning to everybody and I pray all as well as we thank the good Lord for so much. I want to talk about um, Bible interpretations for a moment. Um, giving a shout out to some of the um, newcomers, I like to say in Christ. A lot of people that's been jumping on, you know, wanting to find truth and we thank the Lord for that. And um, I had a question from my sister, Miss Tisha. Um, why are there so many in Bi uh, so many Bible interpretations and the confusion behind it because uh, there's so many Bibles out. First of all, sister, that's a um, very, very uh, powerful question, um, awesome question. And what I'm saying in this video is my opinion on a lot of this. Uh, so let me say that off the top because I am talking about what I believe. So I'm throwing in my opinion on a lot of this. And uh, I know a lot of people probably won't agree with me and that's fine also, love you. Uh, no harm done. Um, it is. There's so many Bibles out. Uh, matter of fact, if you go to BibleGateway.com, you can go online and you can compare, you know, a lot of them. And uh, you got some Bibles out where a whole lot of scriptures not in there, you know. And it causes a lot of confusion. This is why the Lord sent the real pastors, the true elders, the true bishops to expound on the true gospel. Um, also, this is just what I believe. Because it's a lot of people searching for the truth. But it's hard to figure out what to believe nowadays. Just like it was back in the biblical days. They, they had false doctrines all over. And there's nothing new what we're dealing with right now. So when you see so many Bibles out. And I understand um, why people you know, get the NIV, the, the English, the living word. I don't even want to start naming all those translations. But I understand why people you know, try to get a, a better understanding. Because... When you start trying to read the King James and you don't have nobody to help you or, you know, you reading certain passages and it don't make sense. And the thing I like to say, if you can find somebody, this is why I miss Pastor Arna Murray, um, someone like him. Or even when I look at Brother P.P. Drawings, Pastor, um, Pastor Leonard, so many dynamic pastors out here who can break down scripture. And that's what we need nowadays. The scriptures have to be, the word got to be rightly divided in the first place. But then, you got some people who can't really break down scriptures. They quote them, and they move on. And by all these Bibles being out now, in each translation, something is getting left out. You know? And, and you got people out now saying, buy my Bible. I got I got something that's, that's better than this Bible. And then, every, the thing is, everybody that come out with something think that theirs is right. So here it is when people coming into Christ, they, they sitting back trying to figure out, I don't know about King James. They say, King, don't read the King James Bible. Don't, don't get caught up in this Bible. This Bible, there's too much stuff missing in this Bible. And here you are, you stuck. But the Holy Spirit don't want you to be stuck, you know. So the problem is, you got, when people start trying to add in what they think God said, that's the problem right there. When the Lord say, don't add or take away from my word, you know. And I, 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 you had a good question. How you know which one is the true? There's too many of them out. You know, this one got lost. This book, this ain't in the Bible. The, the book of Enoch, and so on and so on. You see what I'm saying? And what that does is, is causes confusion, you know, in the body of Christ, which Satan loves. He loves that. But the thing is, I let me tell you what I had to do. Let me talk about me for a minute. I had to forget what they taught me growing up over the years because it never was the true word of God. They taught us tradition. They taught us religion. But when it came to getting on the meat, they couldn't touch it. So now you know what I did when I found out what Paul told Timothy? Study to show yourself approved. And then you find a good Bible teaching pastor who is not sugarcoating the word, but teaching the truth. The Spirit will show you what the truth is. The Holy Spirit. Let me say that right there, because there's a lot of spirits out here. Satan got a whole lot of doctrines out here. But a true pastor will teach, not what you, what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. And it will cut you up. That's how you understand what the truth is. The Holy Spirit speaks through the pastor. 
The Holy Spirit speaks through me, speak through you. When you have the Spirit, then you can discern all these other spirits. You can tell what's not of God. But if you get caught up in just listening to that people without studying, you're going to be lost. So I had to forget tradition and religion to study my to study to show myself approved. And whoever's preaching to me, I go back and match it up with the word right there. A lot of people just want they don't want to study for themselves. And that's the reason why the church has been following so many lies and liars for I don't know how long now. Because too many are just stuck on having church. That's all they, a lot of people just go to the building and just, hey man, we had church. But God sent pastors to teach people. But then you got people sending themselves, and then you got Satan sending them, and then you got people telling them that God told them to preach, and it's really they can folks that call them to preach. My grandma used to say some was called, some was sent, but some just got up and went. That's what you have going on nowadays. And when you get that type of preacher in your church, it's going to be a lukewarm church. Anything going to go on when they're not called by the Father. His word is so powerful, y'all. And when you have babies in the word, you got to, you got to start them out on milk. But the problem is we got too many Christians that want to stay on milk. They do. And when you want to just stay on milk, you ain't going to never get to the meat. Let me say something. To halfway understand the Bible, y'all know I say this all the time. First of all, you got to pray in the Spirit and ask the Lord to guide you, show you, teach you. But to halfway understand the Bible also, you got to realize the time period of the books. You got to realize who's talking, who's who's doing the talking, who is talking to, who was it written to, I mean, excuse me, who was it written to. And understand this about, about the book. The order of the books are not in chronological order. These are the things we are not taught a lot of times. Let's use Acts for an example. Just because Acts comes after John, that don't mean Acts was written after John. You see what I'm saying? Revelation is a prime example of a book that past, present, and future. Men have twisted up so many scriptures just to justify what they're doing. That's why you got to be in the Spirit once again. And having the Holy Spirit, you'll, you'll start getting it. You'll get it. That's the only way. You wonder, let me let me ask you this, you wonder, because I know you wonder this, I did once upon a time, you wonder if all Christians have the same Bible and the same Holy Spirit, should not Christians be able to agree? What do you see now? A whole lot of Christians who don't agree. A whole lot of pastors who don't agree. They have fallouts with each other. Why? Everybody don't use the same Bible and everybody is not teaching from the original the true meanings of these words. And I'm not saying that God is the confusion. No, it, it, it's not God's doing. Satan is the author of confusion. God is the author of peace. And Satan knows that just like he always tried to do. If he can get one word and twist it, then he done messed up that whole scripture. Give an example. Man does not live off of bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of the Father. Satan, excuse me, tried to twist that scripture on Jesus when Jesus was led into the wilderness fasting. He tried to switch up the scripture. And he's good at switching up the scriptures. So when you got a pastor that's standing up teaching what Satan taught, well, that show confusion, not the Lord. See, we all, once again, we all don't have the same Bible. Apostle Paul put it, put it like this in Ephesians 4 and 5. He said, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Now y'all know what? We done changed that. We got many Lords, many faiths, many baptisms. My opinion. Why? Because now they teaching so many ways to get to the Father. So many religions, so many traditions, so many things that done keep, kept folks focused off of the, of the Lord's word. That passage shows us that Unity, which is something that the church have lost, not all of them, but that unity that should exist in the body of Christ as we are indwelled by one spirit, the Holy Spirit. Why? Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. That's what we're supposed to be operating in, the Holy Spirit, Brother K-Ray. Can we take it there in this video? 
This is the problem. We got a lot of Christians who don't operate in the Holy Spirit, but yet they claim they have the Spirit. To answer these questions about these interpretations also, once again, there are Christians who never listen to the Holy Spirit. Preachers who won't listen to the Holy Spirit. Not all, once again. Teachers, deacons, musicians, you name it. I'm not talking about everybody, once again, but there's a whole lot of them who will not listen to the let me let me put it to you like this you ever seen a church service where the spirit was high and then the holy spirit get drove out because of man doing what they want to do or we can say mankind the holy spirit had to get out of the way because somebody wanted to have their own spirit they wanted to show out some of y'all saying amen because it happened at your church every sunday not being funny, y'all. People will drive out the Holy Spirit. You know what the Holy Spirit will do? Get out of the way. Because the Holy Spirit is not in competition with you. The Holy, the Lord don't share his glory with nobody. That's why he gets all the glory. He gets it. He gets all the worship. You better look at King Herod, what happened to him. So when you have people doing what they want to do, you see why it's like it is. Different people with different interpretations of the Bible. You know what I see with this also? With all these Bibles out. I, I hate this. I hate it, y'all. I ain't lying. I hate it. Let me let me give you an example. Sunday school. Look at Sunday school. Think about people who who come in with all the different Bibles different Sunday school books in there. Come on, y'all with me? For those that go to Sunday school. Then you got what? The commentary. Most people I know focus so much on the commentary, they, they forget about the scriptures. They don't hear the Holy Spirit. And you can easily get caught up. You notice I said the word caught up? Y'all catch what I'm saying? You can get caught up in what the commentaries say. It's like you got this teaching of the pre-trib being caught up. Hmm. Is that really what Paul was saying? Y'all see what I'm saying? You got different words with different meanings. Or that same word you're looking at can have more than one meaning. But if you don't know the original meaning, just like we talk about hell on her, Bible teaches you in the Greek, Hebrew, Sheol, Hades, the common grave. But then you got a teaching out hell and the lake of fire is the same thing. I don't agree with that. Not according to the Bible. So I'm just using that for an example. This is what goes on. And then let's take it to when the pastor stands up and do his sermon. Here's a prime example of these interpretations. A pastor tells the church to stand up and read. And the pastor might say, well, I'm in the King James Version. And then there's a lot of people in the congregation. Brother Jones over there got the NIV. Sister Tammy sitting on the other side of the church with the living word. The brother behind her got the, the common English Bible. Everybody in the church got different Bibles, but yet and still the pastor saying, read along with me. You can't even follow along because it's too many words that's, that's not really there. Don't go to a book like Ezekiel. Then this one over here got the NIV. Wait a minute, pastor, I don't see what you're talking about. Why? That scripture not there. It's certain scriptures that's not even in some of these interpretations, these other different Bibles, and it causes confusion. Then somebody asks a question. I don't think that Bible right you got. Then you got another Bible of confusion. Are oh, y'all there with me? Y'all see what I'm talking about? Different Bibles can cause a lot of confusion. That's why, once again, you need a true Bible set. I ain't talking about all these feel-good sermons and hooping and hollering just because you can get somebody hyped up and you can sing. No, I'm talking about really breaking down and teaching like Pastor Arna Murray. Uh, Lord knows I'm going to miss that man. That man taught me a lot. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14 teaches you. And then here go the other thing. You got a lot of people that's really unbelievers. How can the unbeliever interpret scripture? Can't. So I say 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, it teaches that. A, man, come on, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Peter warned us 
uh, against those ones who would misinterpret the scriptures. I'm thinking of uh, what's my man name? Apollos. Y'all remember when I did the video about Aquila and Priscilla and we talked about Apollos, the preacher? Apollos was a powerful preacher. He was. But the problem with Apollos, Apollos only knew the baptism of John. So think about how many people Apollos probably taught, but he only taught them the baptism of John. So in other words, Apollos was ignorant. I didn't say stupid. Ignorant just means simply not knowing once again. He was ignorant of Jesus and the teaching of salvation. His provision of salvation. Jesus' teachings. So I, I, I got to say it like this. Apollos' message was incomplete until he was taught by Aquila and Priscilla. Once they took him aside and, and, and explained to him about the way of our father, he started preaching Jesus. He started preaching Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one. That's in Acts chapter, um, what is that, 18, around verses 24 through 28, if I'm not mistaken. They taught him. Yes, they had to teach the preacher. What does that show us, y'all? That even the preacher, if they don't have the complete message, they have to be taught. And somebody like me who study, somebody like you who study, you can actually, you are qualified by the Holy Ghost to teach something that the preacher might not even know. See, some of us don't agree with that. A deacon, if that pastor don't teach the true complete message of the gospel, that deacon who knows the gospel can teach that pastor. You better go back to Philip. That's why when you look at the early church, unity. We don't have that a lot of times now. We don't have that a lot of times. And another big problem with these interpretations is too many of them that's based on pet doctrines. Based on my opinion. Well, brother, this is what I mean. You know, I I, I come on y'all, can we keep it can we keep it real? Now you done cut out what the Lord say. That's why I say they had their own doctrines then. We got them now. You got to study to show yourself approved. If you don't study, you're going to believe anything and accept it. This is what's wrong with most Christians. I didn't say all. Oh, this is why, let me take it there. This is why most Christians are stuck on holidays, religion, and tradition. They won't study. They won't allow themselves to, to get past what Big Mama just believed in, what Papa believed in, what Mom and Daddy believed in. They did it. If it was like P.P. Jones pastor say, Pastor Cockrell said, if it was good enough for Mama, then it was good enough for me. Well, what if Mama was on her way to the Lake of Fire? What if Daddy and Papa and Big Man and all of them was on their way to the Lake of Fire? Because they was up under false teaching. I'm not being funny, y'all. Just something to think about. Because we continue to follow what Oh man, that generation did it. My mom and them did it. We follow what people say. That's your problem. Not talking about everybody. When you start getting deep in the Bible, studying, you'll put away a lot of stuff that big mom and them was caught up on. Paul once said in Corinthians chapter 3, uh, I want to say 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, I gave you milk because you wasn't ready for the solid food. I, I gave you milk, not the meat. Couldn't get that to you. Why? You wasn't ready for it yet. And then he came back and said, indeed, you're still not ready for it. You are still worldly. He was talking to the church. Let me let me let me say that again, y'all, because somebody might have missed that. Paul said in, in, in Corinthians chapter three, I gave you milk, not solid food. You were not ready for the meat. Indeed, you are still not ready because you are still worldly. He was talking to the church. Now, that statement alone right there, look at how many Christians are still worldly. Y'all see what I'm saying? Look at how much sin is operating in the house of God now. How can an immature Christian be ready for me? Okay. Some churches, they really claim to believe the Bible. But their interpretations is always based around traditions of the church. Tradition 
and religion don't have nothing to do with getting in the kingdom. That causes a conflict. That's the problem with the Pharisees. Rules. Oh, we stuck on this. That's why they never could see the father, what he was doing. Cause a conflict. Y'all hear me all the time say, that's why I don't care nothing for religion nor tradition. When your church is based on tradition, you're in bad shape. And you wonder why when, when, when certain holidays come around, the church closed down. How do you close down the church for something that ain't got nothing to do with the Holy Spirit? It's how far off we are. It's a dangerous game to play. But once again, as I close out, I'm going to say this again. Unity is what's missing. They don't have it. In the early church, unity is what they had. And the reason you don't have unity in most of these churches is because, once again, it's too many doctrines. It's too many interpretations. Give you an example. Look at the greatest one that's out now. It ain't the, it ain't the one Jesus talked about. It's the prosperity gospel. Jesus' prosperity was your soul prospering. Getting into eternal life. The, 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 the new kingdom. The new heaven on earth. He didn't have nothing wrong with material things and, and, and us being rich and everything. But he didn't want the material things having you. He didn't want you to serve your other gods. Nothing wrong with prosperity. It's the abuse. We don't serve a broke God. But the prosperity gospel they preaching now ain't got nothing to do with your soul prospering. Now salvation is for sale. They trying to sell the gospel now. You don't hear these, 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 fire, these fire doctrines too much now. Repentance. Salvation. Y'all, this is what we're living in. Preach what people need to hear instead of what they want to hear. So I'm going to go ahead and close out with that. Y'all love y'all and y'all have a beautiful, blessed day. To Lord, I say the same. See you on the next one. Take care.